Well, welcome back to the van build, and this episode, I either might be a genius or I might be a bit of a fool. So, um, I didn't really realise until I looked into lithium batteries, is that lithium batteries don't really like to be cold. Or more specifically, they don't like to be charged whilst cold. From my understanding, they can be used whilst they're cold, but if you try and charge them when they're below 5 degrees centigrade, um, they're really not happy about it and you can do some permanent damage. So, uh, my plan is to make a battery warmer, or a temperature control battery warmer, and I'm sure there are loads of different options for doing this, uh, but I've just picked up a bunch of cheap components, mostly off Wish. So I've got a temperature sensitive uh, relay, which is the same temperature sensitive relay the hot water system uses, which you've seen in another video. Uh, a flat mounted USB, um, flat mounted USB, and a 5 volt um, jacket warmer. So off wish selling these little material pads which have a little heating element in and you plug it in the USB to draw a power bank and it would heat up your jacket but it's got five pads my plan is to put them underneath the batteries. Hopefully with less than 15 pounds in parts from Wish uh, we're gonna make a battery heater. So this is the reason it's necessary at the minute it says my battery is nine degrees yeah, battery temperature is 9 degrees, and that temperature sensor is actually mounted on the top of the main positive terminal. So, the bottom of the batteries will probably be a little bit colder. And uh, we'll get the diagnostic software out and have a look at the battery sensors themselves and what temperatures they're saying. Mm. Just got the diagnostic software hooked up to the tablet, just to see what the batteries are getting. Module ID to number 6. Right, the batteries are actually really cold. They are down at 6 degrees. Which is what I thought, if the top's reading 9, I would have thought that this was going to be colder. Equipment wise, we've got this 5 volt USB jacket warming pads from Wish. I think I paid £4 and effectively we're going to put one big one underneath one battery and then the two sort of little ones underneath the other batteries that's going to be plugged into this surface mounted USB this is going to sort of be the brains of the system so we'll have uh, the positive well positive and uh, negative going to this which powers this and then we'll have this negative to the negative bus bar and then we'll have the positive for this coming out of S2, which is like, is the relay, and we'll have positive go, uh, going into the relay. So when this senses the temperature is, say, above 5 degrees, uh, the relay is open, uh, no, no power is going through to turn this on, which would in turn turn this on, and when it senses with the temperature sensor that the temperature is dropped below 5 degrees, that would fire the relay, which would then complete the circuit, which would power that up, which in turn would power that on, which would heat the batteries, and when the temperature sensor reached its uh, d my desired cutoff temperature, say back to the five degrees, it would then open the relay, turning off the UV, uh, turning off the USB, which would in turn turn off the um, jacket heater. It's a really simple, rudimentary system, and uh, there are probably there are probably bits of equipment uh, which you can do it, which, do it, which will do a better job. But this is dirt, dirt cheap, and I have these components. For reference on the battery system, it's uh, we've got I've got three um, Valence U27 12XP lithium batteries, all 130 amp hours each, running in parallel. Two of them are together. One of them is in this compartment, although they are still linked just through the hole, just just for space reasons. Uh, don't mind about the pump. This hasn't actually been completed yet. There'll be a, a partition built between them. And we're going to pick these up as well. We're going to put an extra 25 millimeters of insulation board below them. There's already insulation board below the floor, but we'll put another bit. Then we're going to put the heat pads on top of those. And then we're just going to sort out all the electrics in here somewhere. I will point out as well, uh, I've already got a low temperature charge cutoff set for these. So the MPPT solar controller can get that temperature information and turn off. But I've actually got it set up so when that temper temperature information uh, is loads to the BMV, the BMV can then set off a cold temperature charge 
trigger which fires the relay in there and I've set the relay up to turn the remote pins on and off of those so the safety system set up to stop them being damaged but I would rather because as it's becoming winter I had a system which actually kept them warmer so they never reached that cutoff because arguably I probably want them to be charging if it's cold enough for them to be turned off so I'm just going to make a little frame for it and let's use this bit of scrap wood cut out a slot in it for this mount it on the back USB going out the back sorted so let's turn this into a little frame made a uh, little mount for it it's not my tidiest of work I might redo it in a bit but I should get enough of those to put a coat of paint on it so just for some more insulation I'm just going to be using um, some of my off cuts of my insulation board and just kneading up the edges of a bit of um, foil tape right well time to do my least favorite task which is taking all the wall batteries out because I have to disconnect a lot of wires and bolts so let's turn off the solar isolator let's turn off the master and then it will turn off the DC the DC and the uh, rest of it all taped down at the bottom yes I know it looks like a mess Just overly even amount of pads just in the center or the bottom of the, the batteries. Wiring for this is generally super simple. So let me just attach these. So that's basically it all set up. All I need to do is just connect this to back the battery positive negative. Uh, and put the temperature sensor in. Yes, yeah, so all I need to do now is just connect up the temperature sensor, put the back back on, and give it a shot, give it a test. Right, let's get this all connected up. So, temperature sensor. Right, so the plug me in, I've got to, um, well, I've got to turn all the power off. So, master switch. Off, and, well, time to plug all this in. So, this is going in here. There we go. Right, we'll do a quick bit of wire management. So let's set this up to um, heating mode. Hold that down. So now it's now on heating mode. And we want to set it that if it's a blue. So I'm going to say Mark 1 of the battery heater in theory works. Uh, it took a while to get the get the, this set up. I might need to change the location of the thermometer uh, but this is so set up it's set for 12 degrees at the minute and I've set the high status or something the backlash feature to 5 degrees which means when it's 5 degrees below this it turns on or when it reaches 5 degrees above it it turns off and that's actually far more than necessary to actually heat the batteries it's just at the moment the location of the um, the temperature sensor heats up quite quick, quickly because it's a little bit too near the heat mat. And the heat mat is the next issue of why version 1 is a failure. The system works, it turns on and off. Unfortunately, that USB heat mat, um, which is for designed for putting in jackets, has a timer on it. So it only lasts for, I don't know, about half an hour before it turns off, um, which is obviously not ideal. So, Mark 1 is a failure. Mark 2, I've ordered some... Well, actually, the other reason I think Mark 1's failure is I did a little bit checking back on the poorly labelled Wish page, and those are only 9 watt. And it's 9 watts between those three pads, so each pad is probably only 2 watts, 
which isn't a lot at all, and probably not enough to actually heat to keep those warm even when it's cold. So um, I've ordered off eBay some 15 watt 12 volt pads designed for keeping tank um, water tanks or parts of engines and stuff um, above freezing. Um, or 3D printer beds warm. Uh, so three of those at 15 watts, so 45 watt in total. And they don't have, they're, they're designed to realistically what I'm gonna use them for. So that'll be the next version to test. Well, looks like I definitely need to uh, get the heat temperature sorted because I've got the low temperature alarm going off. Yep, low temperature. And then no energy coming in the solar panels, which is a shame because it's a blue sky day. So turn the lights on. Okay. Well, um, First actual cold temperature alarm going off in the van. I didn't actually know what it did before, so it's quite good to actually see it in practice. And the safety systems have actually worked. The um, solar control is currently turned off. It's not charging, you know, in blue, uh, full sunlight. And I've just started the engine as well to test and the DC DC charger also is turned, has turned itself off and won't charge when the engine's running because the temperature is too cold. So, my, well, my heating system didn't work, although, the relay is activated, um, so but the battery, uh, the, the heater I've got for them is a bit underpowered at nine watts for all of it. So I've ordered off eBay some hot tank warming pads. These are 15 watts each, and they are a little bit smaller than I thought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sheet of aluminium, about two mil aluminium plate, and cut out. Uh, a base which is going to be the size of the batteries for each of them, glue that to the underside and then stick that on the uh, bottom of the battery. Mainly so it's just not pinpointing one warm spot in the middle of the battery, that is got that little aluminium plate going to sort of just spread out that heat a little bit more opposed to just pinpointing a really hot spot under the battery. Right, so it's going to base aluminium plates. So aluminium plates cut, this is what the, the batteries will currently sit on and the reason I don't is you can see that's the surface area of these pads versus the surface area of the battery so I think sticking that in the middle of it just going to help radiate that heat out a little bit further and give a more even heat to the batteries and more concentrated one. I think I'm going to use aluminium foil tape and tape them onto the bottom of these. Right, so I'm going to turn off all the electrics and definitely show you how much of a cold mass these are. And there's condensation all over these batteries. So I think I'm also going to build an insulated box around them and seal and seal them into it. Uh, I don't want condensation forming on them because they are pretty cold. So I've just cut out all of these with the PIR insulation board, this 25mm stuff, and just cut it into fit, to fit into the bottom and make a box. So we're going to go one little step further in their uh, installation and we're going to make them this little three mil sort of battery cosy. Just for an extra bit of insulation which can be completely sealed around them. I mean, they certainly start to look the part. And by look the part, they look cooler. Right, time to start putting it all back together. Just put the orange piece on this top bit, because this is aluminium backed. I'd rather not a conductive material near the top.
Right, it's getting dark, but it's time to connect back up all the batteries again. So it's getting dark now. I've just got the batteries all plugged back in, but I haven't powered them up yet. Connect up, up to their diagnostic software so I can get the temperature reading off the internal sensors. Right, start read. So batteries are in four degrees. So the battery warmers are on. Um, well, it's the following morning in the van, it's been a cold night and from the looks of it, the, the battery monitors have been a complete success. The Victron temperature reading is nine degrees and that's taken off the air temperature or the temperature of the terminal on the very top there. And that's where we beat, that's it currently open and the van's air temperature is cool. But the temperature sensor for the batteries, um, 11.2, and just connecting to the diagnostic software, the batteries and the diagnostic software are reading 11 degrees. So the batteries themselves are warmer than the uh, air temperature in the van, which means it's worked. Probably actually warmer than they need, so there's going to be a bit of, going to be a bit of playing around with this probably getting them to sort of come on at a lower temperature and turn off at a lower temperature. They don't need to be this warm, they can be a little bit cooler without an issue, but overall success. Except on the lights on. Okay. So, that's pretty much gonna end this video here. Um, yeah, super cheap um, battery warmer using a temperature sensor relay and some, some heat pads. First heat pads didn't work, so as they're only nine watts in total, and version 2 had 15 watt heat, heat pads per battery and then the batteries themselves heavily insulated and it seems to be working fantastically. So yeah, let's end the video here. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, feel free to message me on Instagram if you have any questions about the things I've done and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.